In this video, we're going to learn how to make graphs, save them, and a little bit about something called R Markdown. So first of all, uh, let's talk a little bit about the built-in uh, data sets in R. So one of them is called MT Cars, and that's the one we're going to work with a little bit today. So first of all, we could just view it. Notice that even though it's not in our environment over here, it's still there, right? So you can still type in view. Notice that view has a capital uh, V. Otherwise, it won't work. But let's let's run that command and look. It's going to open up another tab in our source editor here, and it's showing us what that data set is. There's, uh, you know, these are the number of uh, uh, columns, and here each row here is a type of car, right? So Mazda RX4 and so on. It's just showing us different cars. Each row is a car, and this is stats on that car: how many miles per gallon, how many cylinders it has, etc how many gears there are in that car. So, so, that, so, so that's, that's what we're gonna talk a little bit about today. Uh, so, uh, well, one other thing, by the way, in general, if you wanted to learn more about this data set, if you weren't sure, like, what is this VS? Let's say you didn't know what some of these things were and you were interested in. Uh, for the built-in data sets, at least, here's the command, question mark, and then the name of that data set, MT cars. So question mark, and then that tells you a little bit more about it. So notice here on the help command, it's sort of like, you know, help. Uh, basically, here's why it's called MT cards, motor trend for cards, right? So basically, and it's telling us what all those stands for, right? So VS is, uh, you know, the V-shaped uh, or the straight, right? So if it's zero, then the engine is V-shaped. And if it's one, then the engine is straight. So that, that's sort of what that means here, right? It's telling us it's a binary for what type of engine it is. And again, same with the other variables, right? Number of forward gears is gears and so on. But anyway, so let's say you, you view that data set and now let's say we want to make some sort of a graph here. Let's say we wanted to look at, so let's look at the gears here. There's uh, a, a bunch of cars with four gears, some with three, and uh, you know, there's even some with five over here. So let's say you were curious, like how frequent are these? Maybe are there are they mostly threes? Or are they mostly fours? Or are, are, are they five? How many? You know. So that that's an example of what's called a bar graph. So in order to make a bar graph, we're going to first use this command called counts. And in general, you could use this as a template. And I'll I'll show you in a sec. Uh, other templates for different types of graphs. But first, we're just going to create the graph, and after that, we're going to talk about how to save it and export it. So, counts, what this is, command is doing, let, let's run it first, and then I'll tell you what it's doing. But essentially, what it's doing is, uh, it's, sorry, counts is not the command, counts is just what I'm saving it as. The command itself is called table. So, remember, again, this is, I can choose the word, right? This is just me choosing something and assigning it to this guy. But this, this here, so, so notice this is like reviewing all the other stuff we've done so far, right? So again, this is just assigning it so I can, to the left of it, that's just me me creating whatever I wanted to. I just called it counts here. Um, but table, this is the command. This table command, what it does is it basically takes this vector. So for the table, you're going to input a vector usually. There's a version with a matrix, but for now, uh, you input a vector. And in that vector, it's just giving you the distribution. And so in, in the case of the gear, it's telling us how many threes, fours, and fives are there. And again, if there were other numbers as well, other than three, four, and five, it would also give us a count uh, for those as well. That's why I called it counts, right? Because it's telling us how much of each number there are. So again, notice again here, empty cars, dollar sign. The dollar sign means anything after the dollar sign is the column within this data set. So again, the gear column within the empty cars data set is the vector that we're inputting into this command table and whatever we get for that we're saving as counts. So that's the first row. So what this is doing at least is it's taking that data set and it's giving me this. So now let, let's see, let's just do the counts command just to see what happens when we type in. So if I just type in counts just to see what happens, run that. Well, let's see. Here's what it's doing. Count has now saved uh, three. That's the number of cars that have three gears, and there's 15 of them. The number of cars that have four gears, and there's 12 of them. The number that have five gears, and there's five of them. So basically what it does, that's why, you know, again, it's called count. It's because it's, it's counting how many are uh, of each type there are. So again, it's taking this vector, 
and that's what the table command is doing. It's counting those, and so now we have that here. So then finally, the bar plot graph. Uh, the bar plot graph is created by the bar plot command, which takes in uh, a vector over here as its in main input, and that vector here again is count. Remember, count is, is saved as as this guy, this this vector that has you know the value and its frequency. Frequency meaning that'll be the height of the bar, right? That's how frequent that thing is. So anyway, so that's what this counts. So just literally just bar plots and then counts will give us a bar graph that shows us how frequent each of these things are. But after that, so in the bar plot uh, command after counts, there's other options. So remember, after usually the main input, you're gonna have a comma, and then the thing that follows are examples of options. So this option, is to make a label for it, uh, for the, a title for the graph, and this xlab option is a label for the x-axis, right? So again, you could do it without it, but it looks prettier with labels. But and and we're just saving it as x. So let's just see what happens now. Let's say let's just do the um, bar plot command, and wow, look over here. We just created a graph on the bottom right over here, and as we can see again the. The title is car distributions, the number of gears is the x-axis, and hey, we can see exactly what this counts that little vector represented, right? Three, four, and five, that's the number of, you know, three gear cars, there's, oh, 15 of them, right? Four gears, there's 12 of them, five gears, there's only five of them. But hey, this visual representation makes a lot clearer picture of the, hey, how much more frequent, how much more common these type of cars are than these type of cars, right? So that's that's uh, basically how you can create a graph. And I'll show you in a sec um, uh, other types of graphs beyond uh, bar graphs. But before that, so let's say you've made this, how do you save it, right? So the way to save it is to click on export. And you can save it either as a PDF or as an image file. Uh, so let's say we wanna save this as an image. I'm gonna click, so export, save as image, and here's where it gets a little tricky because notice where it's being saved. This, uh, unlike you know loading a data set, this doesn't automatically save to the working directory. Uh, you have to basically choose where to save it to. It's basically gonna save to the most recent place you saved to within R, and hey, if you haven't saved to anything in R that session so far, it's just gonna save it literally in like your main like C drive, if you will. So what you gotta do is you gotta click on directory and then choose where within your computer you wanna save it. And again, you could like find your working directory within there once and then it'll always save uh, to there, at least for that session. But just be really mindful. Again, the biggest misconception with this is, oh, I made the picture, I saved it, but then I couldn't find where I saved it, right? So just, you can avoid that all by just re being really careful and mindful about where you're saving it by clicking the appropriate folder in directory. But so yeah, you do that, you save it, and then now you have a nice clear uh, PNG file, right? It's a lot clearer quality than if you were to have taken a screenshot here, so that's something to keep in mind. But in either case, that's how we can do that. Now, other examples of graphs are on this website. Uh, I've linked this website on the FAQs of this module, so if you look at the FAQs, here's where, you know, if you wanted to create uh, uh, a scatter plot sort of like this. Here you can, this this command copy pasting it would work. And all these are again using the empty cars data set just so that you can, just so you don't need to worry about downloading something new. Um, and you can easily, you could know that this should work. And so bar plots, that's the one we just did, right? So that's where, hey, that's where this comes from, right? That, this is an example of a template. Notice here, you can also make horizontal bar graphs just by amending things slightly over here. You can stack them, you can do a bunch of other things when you're doing it. In general, one thing I'll say about this is if you wanted to learn more about the bar plot command, uh, including what other options are there, you're like, oh yeah, are there other options beyond these? Yeah, there's a lot. In fact, let's just type in help and then bar plot, see what happens. Help bar plot, run that. Ah, bar plot, it's showing us um, basically what are all the different options? And there's many, right? You can choose how wide it is, how much space there is between things, whether it's horizontal. By the way, here, notice it says horizontal equals false. And that's like in the help, like in the main sort of uh, directory of this, right? What this means is that 
if you don't mention true or false, which we didn't here, for this option, the horizontal option, it's going to make it false by default. So by default, it's going to give you vertical uh, bar graphs. But if you were to change this to true, then it'll be horizontal. So all these are showing the defaults, and you can edit any one of them as an extra option uh, to edit your graph specifically. But again, these more examples of graphs here that you can use. Now, finally, let's also talk a little bit about our markdown. So our markdown is an alternative to our script. So here, you know, we've we've been working with a script file where we type in the commands, but the output sort of show up either here or if they're a graph over here. So instead, let, let me do file, new file, and instead of our script, I'm going to click on our markdown. And here, you know, we could just uh, make this PDF as the main output that you want. And uh, you can give it a title, you can give it your author. I'm just going to say Rohan. And this is example. Okay, create your document. And so now notice again, instead of this untitled one, untitled two, this document is basically uh, an example of an R uh, markdown document. And basic, and I'm also linking a, a tutorial on it if you wanted to learn more. But essentially, what this is doing is it's creating something where it's like a hybrid between kind of like a, a fancy Microsoft Word document and your R commands. So whenever in this document, whenever you see this, these three sla these three backslashes and uh, the the curly brackets, this they're not exactly backslashes. They're the uh, key to the left of your one on your keyboard. So there are those small ticks on the top left. So those three and then a curly bracket. And then R is like here. And then optionally, you can have some extra stuff here. But in general, anything within that, within these three, will basically be read, it, read as a command that R will execute. And anything outside of that, so like here, you could clearly see it in gray. So anything within this gray is an R command. Hey, this is summary of this car's data set. And this is, you know, plotting, you know, the pressure thing and so on, right? So, so basically, and you could even like collapse these down if you wanted to save space. But basically, and anything in between is sort of like just text. And there's some things like, you know, the two stars might make it bold or italics, depending on if you do one star or two. And this is like signifying a new heading. And if you include plots, basically, again, here we have, it's a plot of this variable. So you can have, so basically here, the plot that shows up, if you were to run this, will show up in your PDF. So again, all I'm saying is this is a combination of just regular text and our commands within this gray space. And when you do knit, when you knit it and then open it, it now creates a PDF. And notice this is a cool PDF in the sense that it's all the words that I had, right? These were the different titles. And hey, because I had that one plot pressure thing, it's doing a plot of that pressure thing. And yeah, it's just a one page PDF, row an example, as I said earlier, uh, but yeah. But essentially, there's, you can watch that tutorial if you're interested. This is obviously like optional, more advanced stuff. You can always use a, a real Microsoft Word document and, and use these uh, image files that you create from here or any uh, numbers from here and create it that way. But this is just an extra option. And finally, here, you can also type in equations here using LaTeX. So if you're familiar with LaTeX as a language, you can also embed that within uh, this space over here. So that's just one way you can have more advanced looking papers.